Hi everyone, good evening. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is going to just be um, some pieces on the alto recorder as well as the tenor recorder. So, in the area tonight, this evening, unfortunately, there are some reports of tornado watches and tornado warnings. And so, um, if need be, I will be ending this stream like in the middle of it if, you know, the emergency stuff comes on again. And I was supposed to actually go um, meet a friend as well as go and attend the actual orchestra practice, however, because of the storms, I was kind of, you know, uh, plans have changed. So instead, I'm just going to be here and playing some pieces in the description. I put I was playing some Bach on both of my alto and my tenor recorders, which we will be doing and as well as some Pokemon music. If we have time, I'll play some Pokemon music. All right, without further ado, I'm going to um, introduce this first instrument. This is the alto recorder. It is um, a little bit larger than regular soprano, and it's pitched in the key of F, in the, in the key of concert F instead of the key of concert C. So this recorder sounds like this with all the um, holes covered by the fingers. That is going to be the F that's on the treble, the treble clef. So usually the soprano recorder goes from the C that's on the treble clef itself to a C that's really high up on the, you know, the ledger lines. However, this instrument, it's pitched a fifth um, down. Alrighty, so without further ado, this first piece, I've played it through on stream before. This is going to be the Brandenburg Concerto Number no. 2 by Johann Sebastian Bach. And what's very interesting about this piece is that we have a group of soloists instead of when you think about a concerto, you think of one soloist versus the entire orchestra. However, back in the Baroque period, it was very popular to have a concerto grosso where you have a group of soloists pitted against the forces of the accompanying orchestra. In Brandenburg Concerto Number no. 2, you have a solo recorder, a solo oboe, a solo violin, and kind of the star of the whole concerto here would be the solo trumpet part, played on a natural trumpet, of course. And the other interesting part of this would be there is some evidence that Brandenburg Concerto No. 2 was actually written for solo horn and then the three other soloists and a harpsichord as well as the basso continuo. The basso continuo is kind of like our rhythm section in the Baroque time period where you had the cello and then you had like a harpsichord, you had a lute or you also had a theorbo which is another type of lute. Um, you would have something that could play a sustained bass line, so the cello would be playing the regular bass line. And then you would have instruments that could play chords. You could have, again, the orbo, which is a giant, like, baroque lute. You could have the harpsichord, which is very prominent in the basso continuo. Or, in some cases, you could even have an organ or a harp being the accompanist in the basso continuo. So, um, three main parts of a Baroque concerto, usually they are written in this style where you have a fast movement, then a slow movement, then a fast movement. You usually have these episodes where you have the solo instrument and then the tutti, and then it goes back and forth between these groups. Um, a third part would be the basically the design of the concertos themselves, where you have a lot of trills, you have a lot of virtuistic passages for all the instruments, and then there's a lot of counterpoint, especially if the piece is by Bach. And so without further ado, I'll be playing uh, Brandenburg Concerto Number no. 2. We'll try to go through the Brandenburgs that actually have flute instruments in them. So I have number 2 lined up, I also have number 4, and then uh, number 5. Number 5 is a very interesting one, but we'll get to it in a bit. Alright, this is Brandenburg number two, and I'll be playing it unfortunately under tempo, but um, we'll try and do it without any stops. Alright, this is Brandenburg two. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
that was Brandenburg Concerto number two. That was the first movement. Now we will be going into the second movement. This second movement in Brandenburg Concerto number two is marked Andante. And it's again a slow section. We had this format here, the Italian Concerto format, where we're going to be going from a fast movement to a slow movement and then back to a fast movement as our um, third. However, in the Dante, we have this three-fourth time signature. We also have a slower pace. And then also the solo trumpet actually takes a breath or it takes a big tacit here. We don't have the solo trumpet playing at all in this portion. And usually the second movement is in the relative minor or in the relative major, whatever the main key of the concerto is. So. Since Brandenburg Concerto number two is in F major, we could expect the Andante to be in D minor, which is the relative, ma the relative minor of F major. And it is. All right. And then another feature of this movement specifically, you're going to have the three other soloists as well as the basso continua. The basso continua has this continuous um, eighth note pattern where, ju where they're just highlighting the chords using these arpeggios. However, the viola, or not the viola, I'm sorry, violist, um, the violin will actually enter with the melody, then it's passed around to the oboe, then the flute, and then it's basically like this big old fugue. It's not really a fugue, it's just, it has a ton of like counterpoint in it, which is pretty cool. If the other instruments are here, but I'll just play through the recorder part. All right, this is Andante from Brandenburg Concerto number two.
All right, so the next part, we've gone through the slow and Dante, then now we're at the end of Brandenburg Concerto number two. We have the third movement. This is supposed to be the fastest, but oh, my fingers can't move that fast. So we're going to still play it at a very nice, you know, upbeat tempo. This is going to be the Allegro Psy, and this Allegro Psy is very famous for its trumpet entrance. This trumpet entrance has this very, like, fanfare and grand quality to it. You have a ton of trills, and you also have a callback to the theme of the first movement, which is really cool. However, at the beginning, for a long period of time, before the oboe comes in, it's just the trumpet player as well as the continuo. This trumpet part, it's extremely <laughs> up there in the great, crazy range of the instrument. Even even back then, especially back then, when you didn't have the valves on the trumpet, you just had the natural trumpets. And it was just all air and lip pressure, because you know the harmonic series, that's what those earlier trumpets were able to play. And yet Bach wrote something really demanding, where the trumpeter of Bach, or the trumpeter that he knew, orchestra if they ever played this. Long story short, the Brandenburg concertos were probably never played in his lifetime. Um, but anyways, the trumpet part, it's just dazzling. And then you have these call and responses. It's almost like a fugue between the trumpet, the oboe, the violin, and then the recorder. Those are the entrances. And um, I think I'm just going to play through it. I'm going to start at the top of it. I'm going to play the trumpet part on my instrument. And we'll just go from there. Let me move this over because a few times I was having trouble seeing. Let me move my other device over here too because this is a practice room and get it on. Okay. All right, this is going to be the Allegro Asai from Brandenburg number two. I don't know if I should stand up or not. I, I usually stand up when I'm playing this. I can move around a bit more. I don't know. I'll be off camera if I do stand up. I'll be back there and I can't see this. But all right, let's do it.
All right, that was Brandenburg Concerto 2. Thank you so much, everyone. Okay, I think I should play through the trumpet part, and I have an instrument for that. Let me go and get a different recorder for the trumpet part. All right, this is going to be played on my Sopranino recorder. So a Sopranino recorder is higher than our Soprano recorder or our Descant. The Sopranino, it's basically an octave recorder um, than the alto. It's one octave above it. So we still have a, an instrument pitched in the key of F. However, we are again set at one octave. And look how tiny this thing is. It's so cute. It comes in its tiny like little carrying sheath too. I love how cute this thing is. It's a nice instrument. Okay, so Brandenburg Concerto 2, again, we were talking about that trumpet solo, right? Especially the trumpet solo in the third movement, the Allegro Psi, and how difficult and how how up there in the stratosphere it is on the trumpet. However, on the recorder, on this Sopranino recorder, we're able to play at the correct range when we're doing the trumpet part. So I think we should revisit the trumpet part in um, Brandenburg Concerto Number no. 2 and just play it for fun on this instrument. Before I get started, I want to welcome everyone who's been going in here. Thank you so much for tuning in if you're tuning in from the practice room or on Twitch. Um, it's been a pleasure. We were, we've already played through Brandenburg too, but I want to do the trumpet part. However, I am going to put some ear protection in because I am in a, a smaller space when I'm playing this. I'm not playing this outside. I'm not playing my Sopranino recorder and blasting it outside. I'm in I'm indoors, so I'm gonna have to put some, you know, like ear protection on. I'm just gonna be using my my earbuds, and of course they got they got tangled needed them the most. It's like the avatar disappeared when, I was, when the earbuds were needed the most. All right, we are back. Okay, I'm going to put these in. I'm going to play through this thing. I don't know if I want to do the first. You know what? Let's do the first movement. Let's start at the first movement, then we'll go into the third. But this will be the trumpet part this time. Okay, here goes Brandenburg and Sheridan number two's trumpet part.
Right, that was the first movement of Brandenburg Concerto Number no. Two, but the trumpet part is played on a soprano recorder. Thank you so much to Alcon. Thank you. Uh, glad that you were able to join me on this. All good. If you have to go, thank you so much. Ah, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Movement three, Allegro Sai. Okay, let's do this. Wait. fun. The most difficult section um, for me is from measure 126, which goes... Sometimes gets me confused, but oh, I just have to keep at it. Alrighty, let's move on to Brandenburg Concerto Number no. Four. I could play it on this one, but um, this is that Sam Lanella one where it goes. You know what? I should play it on this. I'll play at least the first movement on the soprano and see what happens. <laughs> okay. Usually you would use the alto recorder or a flop to the echo, which is the echo flute in Bach's score of Brandenburg Concerto Number no. Four. He calls for two flop to the echo, and it's kind of 
debated on what he meant by flauti the echo or echo flute. This is what it translates in English. Um, it could be an alto recorder in G. So remember the alto recorder that I showed earlier, that one's in the key of F. Normally you would come across key of F alto recorder. However, there could be an alto recorder in G. And when you have that alto recorder in G, it changes the fingerings of the um, notes because now you're in just the home key of G. You don't have to do the G fingerings on an F instrument or anything like that. Um, it also gets rid of this impossible note. There's an impossible note that when I do play it through on the um, regular alto, I'll talk about. And then there's another, um, there's a few other theories of what the echo flute were. There's also this um, way that you get two different types of alto recorder, probably from two different makers or two different, excuse me, two different materials. One of them has a softer timbre and the other one has a harder timbre. So that could be also the echo flute. And then there's also another theory where Bach meant flagellate or flagellate, those instruments. They're very similar to the quarter. Or it could also just be an alto and F. All right, so let's play through Vandenberg Concerto number four. I'll do the first movement on the soprano note just to see what happens. Again, the soprano is one octave higher than the regular alto. So I'll just see what happens there. Um, and then we'll switch to the alto for the rest of the the concerto, or we'll go back to the first movement and then play through it from there. All right, this is Brandon for concerto number four, first movement.
Thank you so much. Okay. Whew. Oh, there are some parts that seem easier on the smaller instrument, the soprano note recorder, but then uh, there are some parts that I miss the ease of on the larger instrument, the alto recorder. All right, let's go back to the beginning and I'll switch to my actual alto. All right, again, this is the alto recorder. It's one octave below the soprano, and yeah, let's get to Brandon Burke and share the number four, first movement again.
Thank you. That was Brandenburg Concerta number four, first movement on the Alza recorder. Oh, messed up some of the fingerings there. I need to practice it more. It was. It's always so much fun to play this. Just the arpeggios themselves. Oh yeah, and that missing note. So there's this run. So I kind of skip a note there. That's because there's an impossible note there. It's an F sharp, and I'm still trying to figure out the best way to get it when I'm doing that run. So usually you would cover your knee. Like that, but I still haven't figured out the speed or the coordination needed for that, so I just leave it out for now. Sometimes I'll just slur up. Like that but I do need to work on getting that F sharp. How I'm supposed to be doing it is the um, fingering for the top G, which is this. And then the bottom of the instrument will be covered by my knee to flatten it so then we get our F sharp, but uh, I just leave it out for an hour slur up until I get really good at that. I need to keep practicing. Hello, Adventures of Anna. Thanks so much for tuning in. Oh, shoot, who's behind me? <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in, though. Hope you're doing well. All right. Movement two of Brandenburg Concerto number four is marked Andante. This one is also in 3-4. And we're going to be touching on the relative minor of concert G major, which is E minor. This one has the echo effect, as discussed in the um, actual score of the piece where Bach writes for two echo flutes. So this is the major part in the concerto because we see the most of this echo effect being used in movement two.
movement three of Brandenburg Concerto Number no. Four is known as Presto. This is a movement in cut time, and we have this fugue-like structure where the first instruments to come in would be the viola. So viola solo, yay! Technically a viola solo. You still have the bassa continuo, but all right, you got a viola solo. And then we pass that along to another instrument. I think it goes from viola to violin two, and then violin one, the solo violin. And then we get the um, theme, basically. So it's kind of like a fugue. You'll see what I'm talking about. Even though we don't have all the voices, you'll see um, me play through the main theme, and then it's like passed on to the recorder part. And I think you'll know when the recorder part comes in. All right, so this is Presto from Brandenburg, Concerto Number no. 4.
Thank you. So that was Brandon Burr Concerto number four. Okay, now we get to the big one. We're going to get into Brandenburg Concerto number five. So this fifth concerto in the set has a solo flute, or actually a transverse flute, so just the regular Western concert flute. Um, then we have a solo violin. The cool part of this concerto, excuse me, sorry about that, I'm getting so excited. The cool part of this concerto is the harpsichord is actually a soloist. It's not an accompaniment instrument in this concerto at all. It's actually a soloist. It has a giant cadenza in the middle of the first movement. That's about three minutes long. And it sounds like metal music. It's shredding on a harpsichord. How cool is that? And you have Bach playing around in D minor. This concerto is supposed to be in D major. But then yet, in this cadenza, it's so dark and thunderous and it's full of energy. It's all of these like crazy... Um, sometimes he even gets into 64th notes at some points in it. And it's just arpeggios and all these crazy, like, very contrapuntal figures and all of this. Oh my goodness. Please look up a recording of, or a performance of Brandenburg 5 and look at the cadenza. It's going to blow your mind. All right, so I'm going to get to my other instrument. I mentioned it's played on just the normal concert flute. However, there is a recorder that has kind of the same range that's used in flute music in the Baroque period. This is going to be the tenor recorder, the largest recorder I own currently. The tenor is such a large instrument on the recorder end of things that you actually need a key here to get to that bottom note. The bottom note is going to be middle C, actually. This is one octave below your standard desk and or soprano recorder. So the bottom note, when you cover all the, the holes here, will be middle C. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, so let's get into Brandenburg Concerto number five. actually play through the whole thing I might just stand up this whole time it's so large and it's kind of awkward having it in front so I'm just gonna stand and play this part okay restart again and just make sure I can see that I have enough time to turn the page if I need. okay Brandon Burke and Sheridan number four <laughs>
sorry about that.
I think this next one isn't as, you know, crazy movement, the fingerings and all that. So I'm going to return sitting down. Also because my back is hurting from looking down at the, the sheet music. All right, so the second movement of Brandenburg Concerto number no. 5, which I mistakenly called the fourth one earlier before I started the first movement. The second movement of it is called Affietoso, and it's a very slow and hauntingly um, beautiful movement. It's in B minor, the relative minor of D major, and you have basically a trio. You have the harpsichord providing the bass, of course, as well as some embellished melodies. You also have the violin and the flute, so it's basically a trio between these three soloists.
Thank you. Okay, so the third movement of Brandenburg Concerto Number no. Five is again uh, it has a lot of fugal material, but it's in the style of a gigue. It's very bouncy. All right, let's get into movement three. This is the one I've studied the least too. So, fingers crossed, we could get through it. I knew it. I know we can. Great. <laughs>
does it. The end of Brandenburg Concerto number five, and also the end of this stream. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you to ACAM and all the people in the practice room. Thank you so much for tuning in and giving feedback. Thank you so much to Adventures of Anna for uh, tuning in as well. And for all of you watching, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for um, joining me in practicing these pieces. Hope you've learned something interesting about either the instruments themselves or or the types of pieces that were played and like the different um, techniques and the form of the concerto as well. And yeah, thanks so much. It's been a, such a pleasure playing music for all of you this evening. All right, please take care of yourselves. Do something nice for someone. And if you're in, you know, the local area, please stay safe. There's a ton of tornado warnings. Wishing the best for all of you. All right, good night, everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in and do something nice for someone. Take care.